Good morning, everybody, and welcome you all to this Zoom webinar. Before we start, let me remind you of a few housekeeping rules. Keep your mics muted and your cameras off for the smooth facilitation of the proceedings. And also, the webinar link will be available from 9 a.m. till 9.50 a.m. for everybody to join in. No late attendees will be entertained thereafter. Each attendee should attend until the end of the webinar to obtain the certificate for CPD points and the CPD points are strictly adhered to the NCCPD guidelines. This is to improve and maintain the standards of the CPD programs conducted by SHRI and we thank you for the strict adherence of the CPD regulations and your kind compliance. Uh, so today the lecture will be on common skin diseases in practice uh, by Dr. Sivanesan Vibhakaran consultant dermatologist of uh, district general hospital vaunia over to you sir a very good morning to you all uh, i'm talking about uh, common skin diseases in practice today so under this topics today i'm going to talk about some cases and how to di clinically diagnose these common skin diseases and there are some consequences of medical malpractice, such as misdiagnosis and improper treatment. Uh, I think you received this MCQ, so we will see the answers in the, in the end of this lecture. So in dermatology, we are dealing with few symptoms, mainly itch or pain. But mainly we are dealing with visible signs. As a dermatologist, we have a privilege to see the disease process by naked eye, the onset, and progression and healing of the disease can be observed by the naked eye. The most of the time, the side diagnosis is possible. That's what diagnosis is possible. We can treatment can be planned accordingly. So diagnosis is the key in the management of the disease. So when I prepare this lecture the, about common skin diseases in practice, it's a, dermatology is a very vast area. The branch of the medicine deal with skin, mucous membrane, hair and nail. As you know, the skin is the largest organ. So more than 1,500 uh, skin diseases are reported. So a lot of consultations uh, the, in the general practice related to the skin problem. So how to classify? Also, they depend on the common skin diseases, the various factors. Nowadays, the knowledge at your fingertips, I mean the smartphones. So your smartphone, you can download all the international libraries. So you can get the knowledge. You can find what you want with the one touch in your phone. But the knowing is not enough. We must apply. Here we must apply to the patients to save the lives. So in my lecture, how to apply the knowledge to the patients, how to get the better outcome. I try to put some cases the clinically, the e in view easy to understand. So after see a lot of studies, a lot of papers, I try to classify it for this lecture in this short manner. The common skin diseases in practice, the treat and no need follow up. There are three groups. Treat and no need follow up. And treat and need follow up. But no need to refer to the dermatology. If you need, only you have to refer to the specialist. The red signs, the third group, if you see the signs, immediately should be referred to the dermatologist. So I try to classify it in this manner. So first classification, treat and review SOS. The mainly here, the superficial skin infections and contact dermatitis and acute urticaria, area, the short history with mild form of skin diseases, I put here. The, on this group, our aim is no need to care the patients. We must cure the patient. So we don't care the patient. We must cure the patient in this group. So there are two children with mild leachy or painful rash. Here, what is the cardinal features here? Cardinal signs you see. The history itself says so there's a short duration. In signs, you can see there are blisters, very superficial blisters, flaccid blisters. They contain 
straw color fluid sometimes yellow color fluid and very superficial erosions very superficial erosions so very superficial so this yellow color or straw color fluid is very superficial erosion short duration is a bullous impetigo superficial staphylococcal skin infection similar to this case another short duration but there's no bullous here you can see there are few lesions here the multiple lesions with short duration this is a non bullous impetigo in both is a very close up view you can see very yellow color crust this is a typical crust of staph infection and very superficial erosions these are not ulcers these are in the erosions in the epidermis you can see the sub corneal level there is a corneal fight layer is peeled off the underlying pigment and granular layer is clearly seen so very superficial level so this is a blood simba tigo but not only that you can see that the very dry skin in the face with these children and there's black clip that is known as atopic black clip and denine mohan falls these are the atopic features in this child the most of the time children with step infection have underlying atopy so if not treat that atopic properly then they will develop recurrent step infection if not treat properly the uh, step infection sometime they develop this much of severe ill looking babies has generalized erythematous with generalized peeling of skin with radial harrowing of perior ocular lesions is known as staphylococcal scurvigerson syndrome this is a sign the nikolsky sign can elicit in the in this condition also you can see sometimes babies are came with they try lot of home remedies home the herbal treatment at home or some other centers in this baby came with very lot crusted lesions superficial and there are a lot of blisters even though this severe condition we can manage with iv antibiotics and topical treatment we can clear without significant scarring because of very superficial nature again i again i say this um, very superficial mean you can see this blister is very superficial but here this baby also came like this earlier in front when they came with very superficial lesion but then the progressively they go in deep causing ectyma and surrounding cellulitis what happened this baby someone mistakenly prescribed the topical steroid for the step infection when they prescribed the topical steroid for the step infection the the broken the skin barriers then organism crack down and causing this much of disaster this also can be cured with antibiotics but the problem is it will heal with very ugly scarring in the face that's a consequence so second case if anyone came with generalized itching we have to exclude the scabies until proven otherwise so here the, what is the pathognomonic signs the barrows where you need to search in the barrows should be searched in the um, skin creases anyone generalized itching more at night time if there is a contact history of itchy illness especially in the families or in the boardings more than 2 to 4 weeks durations suspect scabies if some uh, the in the palms no barrows but you have to church in the wrist there are some papule or pustules and some linear barrows within the creases in the wrist area sometimes children has even non flexural area has giant barrows in children that's very pigmented barrows in the in the body in adult or children they develop scabitic nodule in the scrotum these are not due to the organism this due to the immunological reaction very itchy here another case this baby is a very yellow color crust so definitely step infection there so treated with step infection but again came to the clinic not is partially cured but still the itching is there and lesions are there here now we can see the the lesions linear lesions in the sole here 
you can appreciate the finger web finger web lesions in the mother hand this is evidence to confirm the scabies in scabies treatment above two months of age above two months of age even pregnancy or lactation no problem the five percent permethrin is a rock of choice it doesn't go doesn't absorb through the epidermis to the dermis this is most of the drugs are metabolized within the epidermis so no no harm uh, about two months of age even one month of age we can apply the five percent permethrin don't use the less uh, or diluted uh, amount of permethrin is a five percent permethrin is a rock of choice 12 hours overnight applications whole body the adults except face and scalp no need because adult has a, has a mature sebaceous gland it has a anti-scabicidal activity so in children immature glands so need to apply head to toe application head to toe application to the children and following day wash the clothes bed seat pillow covers and travel everything uh, sunlight or in the hot water we should repeat the 5% permethrin in one week time the oral and topical antibiotics for the secondary step infection the itching we have to even the organism is killed the itching is uh, continued because of immunological reaction sometimes need one one treatment for antihistamine and scabiting nodules again i said this a uh, immunological reaction so sometime even after application of permethrin you have to apply mild to moderate topical steroid to the scotal skin the second line treatment in other countries used oral ivermectin nowadays after covid our country also there has this ivermectin so this in this case what is the again cardinal signs or characteristic feature here the in here you can appreciate the again linear lesions all over the body the multiple the millions of barrows in the body what happened this way child this is a 13 year old child the moon's face cusingoid appearance due to atrogenic because the the children develop itching severe itching some uh, doctors prescribe oral steroid then child the itching is goes on with steroid then they misuse for 8 to 9 months use of beta mes on tablet uh, self medications from the pharmacist so systemic steroid misuse causing it's like a norwegian scabies crusted scabies lesions in the even palm and soles also a child so this uh, case 3 the child with itchy rash for one month duration the what is the characteristic feature here there is a curvy linear lesion in the penis in the skin this is a typical rash again this is a curvy curvy, curvy linear lesions It's a pathognomonic signs for the cutaneous lava migrants about two years of age albendazole 200 milligram for three days an adult 400 milligram daily for three days before two years better to apply the albendazole cream here uh, again the curvy linear nature the cutaneous lava migrants can occur in any area here interesting case the man winds constructive work they carry the sandbag in the shoulder so lava get it from the sandbag to the shoulder shoulder develop this cutaneous lava migrants in the shoulder some uh, lie down in the beach without shirt they develop multiple lava migrants sometimes this ulcerative type sometimes urticarial type sometimes eczematous type but even though whatever the type the 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 curvy linear lesions are within the skin that the, give a clue to the diagnosis of cutaneous lava migrants if it is secondary infected we have to give a oral antibiotics also topical antibiotics so case 4 the painful rash short duration here what is the characteristic feature it's a unilateral right side not crossing midline the dermatomal distribution grouped in nature there are macule papule blisters the polymorphic in nature so diagnose curvy zoster again the acyclovir is a 800 mg 5 times per 7 days 
if there is renal failure, we need to adjust the dose according to the creatine clearance. Even in tongue also, you can appreciate the junilateral, not crossing midline. Sometimes the, uh, the children uh, or in adult came with late presentation or delay the diagnosis. Sometimes they read it as in the blisters around the ears, it's a contact dermatitis. Sometimes they uh, start the late treatment. Here, this child uh, using a lot of herbal treatment at home and the late presentation. The problem is late presentation, they heal with very ugly scarring. Here, we sourced our chicken box can heal with scarring, but it will settle with the time. But if they secondary infected or there's a late diagnosis, they go more and more scarring. Another dangerous sign here in right hand side, the unilateral rash is exhausted, but this uh, lesions are in the lateral border of the nose and tip of the nose in indicate the nasociliary branch involvement. Nasociliary branch involvement can cause corneal ulcerations. So this sort of case, we should refer to the eye people immediately. Here, if this there is a scar, the, the old scar of Soster with blindness of left side eye in this man because of not properly treated. The Soster with nasociliary branch involvement is known as, again, this also heart season sign. So fever with rash is a common referral from everywhere. Here, there are two days history, fever with rash. What is the characteristic feature? Here you, you can see the macule small plaque, small papules, the clear vesicle with surrounding erythematous water, clear vesicles, and some crusted lesions. This is known as polymorphic nature. If, if they started from the trunk and spread to the limbs, it's a, it's a diagnosis of chicken box. Sometimes that chicken box diagnosed difficult by doctors, but sometimes they're easy to diagnose by the patients or parents. There are incidents I show. The, the pa patient says it's chicken box, but doctor says it's no chicken box, but ultimately they end up with chicken box. So here again, there is a polymorphic nature, sometimes oral involvement, and start from the trunk and spread to the extremities, chicken box. Nowadays, again, common skin disease, there is a blisters in the hand and mouth. So hand food mob disease, it's a Kokosaki A16 virus. This is it's a enterovirus. It can cause diarrhea. Even without diarrhea, they can develop zinc deficiency because of defect zinc absorption. It can lead uh, even after the cure of this disease, even after one month, they can develop views lines or the nail loss. So to, to prevent the, the this nail damage and for this Sing deficiency, we have to give a sing supplement for this Kokosaki virus infection. But sometimes this extensive involvement in the body, very difficult to differentiate this canned food, mouth disease or chicken box. The, the, the features here, you can see the gray color vesicle, not clear vesicle, clear vesicle in chicken box, gray color vesicle with er surrounding erythema in canned food, mouth disease. They usually occur at limbs and spread to the trunk. So if it is extensive, you have to ask the history. It start from the limbs and spread to the trunk. Uh, this, these are the features differentiate from the chicken box versus hand foot mouth disease. In Sri Lanka, we have a lot of children with elbow, knee, buttock variants of hand foot mouth disease. They are not, the, there is a, no lesions in the mouth or palm and sole, but there are lesions in the elbow, knee, and buttock type. But there's a cardinal feature here, very gray color vesicle with surrounding erythematous border. So next case, again, the burning type, painful rash, grouped in nature, the various size of pustules, known as herpes simplex infection, very superficial. In children, they can manipulate the lesion and auto-inoculate in the eyes. Uh, this auto inoculation and there is eye involvement, so it should be treated with oral acyclovir. Don't give topical acyclovir. Better to treat with oral acyclovir. Here, they can, uh, the jello crust, so you have to give uh, antibiotics also. So, this is uh, another case with a pre treatment, post treatment. 
picture very severely ill baby came with this rash with fever what do you think there is a crusted lesion in the lips these are also typically there is a lesion here in the palate the blisters the superficial blisters with crusted lesion is a here very important sign is ruling of saliva the ruling of saliva this a acute gingivo acute curvetic gingivo stomatitis so what is the treatment the oral acyclovir the child difficult to swallow here you can see even the child difficult to swallow the saliva so we need to give iv acyclovir with iv acyclovir you can see the good response even after treatment they develop some hypopigmented postural inflammatory hypopigmented lesion is known as hill the herpes induced lip leukoderma it will settle with time don't use treated as vitiligo if you treated with immune suppressant topical agents develop again reactivation of herpes zoster so this is asymptomatic rash right right hand side and left hand side here you can see the very tiny fine scale here there's no scale but well defined rash here the sensory impairment no sensory impairment but here there is a sensory impairment so this very superficial rash with tiny scale known as pityriasis versicolor here leprosy sometime this boy came with this rash hypopigmented rash they usually treated with some creams so there is no visible scale here it looks uh, whether is versicolor or leprosy how to differentiate there are simple sign in bed side the rub sign when you rub the skin surface with your fingers you can elicit the fine scale you can see here how they after rub sign they develop a very fine scale there is no sensory impairment the children sometimes very difficult to uh, give a um, response uh, so we we have to uh, exclude the leprosy with this easy sign so it's a pityriasis versicolor okay the pityriasis versicolor may be hypopigmented may be hyperpigmentation so so treatment is same so topical antifungal sambo few minutes application and wash it off and night time you can apply the antifungal creams if it's extensive we give you oral antifungal also so next case you can see what is i think everyone know the diagnosis because very annular lesions advancing elevated border the diagnosis is tinea infection it, we depend on the site if it is in the body the tinea corporis in the scalp tinea capitis in groin axilla tinea cruris in the palm the tinea manuum in the nail tinea anchium or onychomycosis in the feet so tinea pedis depend on the site the name is different but the treatment is same here what happen even though this is a large annular lesion they develop lot of polycyclic and multiple rings within the lesions and they develop uh pustules in the edges because of the topical steroid misuse for the fungal infection this known as tinea incognito then this type of presentation difficult to differentiate from the subacute annular pustular psoriasis and lot of other conditions so even if don't know the diagnosis don't apply the steroid for the skin diseases if you know the diagnosis go with treatment if don't know the diagnosis or if it is doubt if there is fungal or other inflammatory disease better to treat fungal first no harm to the patient you can apply the topical antifungal and treat and follow the patient and see what is the response but don't put the steroid first then very difficult to manage the patients this is a, another case some idea if there is a doubt of the diagnosis some have then idea uh, they can use the triple combination they can mix it up steroid and antibiotic and antifungal creams it will help no 
it will to temporarily relieve to the patient but not cure the disease uh, you can see the advancing is uh, advanced age still moving recently the one 30 year old man died at the icu when we go through the history the patient has developed tinea infection and get treatment in by treated with a triple combination with stop potent topical steroid you can see the some tinea infection the how they misuse the, the the tubes more than 50 or 100 tubes uh, of topical st potent steroid they induce the very stray giant stray then they develop the immune suppression and the abscess in the back he did didn't feel the pain or itching they apply the steroid to that abscess also then develop septicemia and death how the tinea kill the man because of the potent topical steroid misuse in the triple combinations so stop triple combinations this already the nmra the give a notice in 2020 the here by informed that nmra would not register new skin cream products and not re-register or renewal of existing products containing anti-inflammatory agents and antifungal and antibacterial agent as a combination with effect from the 2020 but still you can see a lot of products are in market so in sri lanka a lot of things are laws are in written not in action this is one of the evidence so as a doctor we have to stop the triple combinations to use there's no indication in the skin diseases that triple combination but the dual combination sometimes very helpful but in this case what do you think there's a allergic contact dermatitis so to the some application in the forget oh it's a tinea very difficult to diagnose but well defined they apply some creams then we church yes they apply the steroid and antifungal combination the mild steroid and antifungal combinations so now we can go to the diagnosis satinia incognito these are not banded but these are very good uh, creams for some other skin diseases not for the tinea don't use the dual combination so this is a commonly use the creams to the tinea infection the, this not for the tinea infection don't use for the tinea infection this dual combination don't misuse if you don't if you the, the diagnosis if you if you think the allergic contact dermatitis so if, if you have a doubt about this um, fungal infection give a first antifungal in creams and see if not response, then you can treat for the contact dermatitis. But if you treat with a steroid first or combination with steroid, then difficult to eradicate the disease. Another form of tinea is an inflammatory type tinea, is a key on the here, the learning point. Don't do uh, the it's not an abscess, it's a secondary infected with step, but there's a, the underlying the fungal tinea in dermatophytes are here. So it's causing scarring alopecia so no don't do the incision and drainage it worsen the scarring alopecia so ne next case here what is the characteristic feature the the erythematous plug involved in the flexors with the curdy lesions the the white color curd lesion and there are satellite pap papules and colorate of scales are here very superficial rares following the treatment with the antibiotics the usually the cutaneous candidiasis even though in the adult the the frequent wet and diabetes develop the curd like lesions in the flexors it's a candidiasis cutaneous candidiasis here again the flexural lesions of the child after uh, treatment of antibiotics develop this flexural cutaneous candidiasis the mistakenly treated with steroid they, they spread the lesion to the body so candidal balanitis in younger patient you should do the fasting blood sugar and exclude the diabetes the lot of cases with candidal balanitis young patient we diagnosed with uh, with a fasting blood sugar or hva1c is a diabetes or pre-diabetes 
when the patient came in front of the doctor you have to examine the patient properly and then only you have to prescribe the uh, medicines here one of the example i will show in this patient the squamous cell carcinoma of the tip of the penis they go to the opd for three times get the treatment from the doctor but doctor uh, the patient size uh, vason deny to show the uh, so better to see the lesions because we have a privilege the, the dermatology we can see the disease process by the naked eye so we have to see the lesion then only we have to give a treatment without seeing the treatment this uh, another example i show here uh, the this patient also without see the skin lesion the doctor prescribed three or four times in the clinic uh, the medicines they end up with the paget's disease of the nipple the carcinoma so i show so the the 10 cases you, you can see i didn't tell about the, the, the investigation there's no topical steroid no systemic steroid in this about 10 cases these are very common cases no need investigation no need topical steroid or no need systemic steroids right so we will see that another case that two ambulance drivers came with the localized stairs they are different stages of healing this after 3 days this after 2 days so what is the cardinal feature here there is a mirror image mirror image yes symmetrical uh, rash there are some linear lesions also here linear lesions the another case here the blisters this is known as mirror image what happened the beetle crust in the flexors the the crust plate uh, contain cantharidin substance is irritant to the skin causing irritant contact dermatitis is known as blister beetle dermatitis it's common nowadays it's common uh, sometimes the crust in in between breast or in between the two body surfaces sometimes the body surfaces in against the floor uh the blister fluid you can see the blister fluid how the the blister fluid spread and causing irritation of the skin causing blister beetle dermatitis so in eczema is a dermatitis inflammation of the skin maybe exogenous may endogenous the exogenous causes a lot of types they i put here a b c d here they are allergic and like dermatitis photo dermatitis phyto photo dermatitis air bone contact dermatitis blister beetle dermatitis endogenous atopic dermatitis seborrheic dermatitis and venous eczema so topical steroid is the mainstay of treatment in the dermatitis so the inflammation we have to reduce the inflammation with the topical steroid so here as you know the all the potency of the steroid the mild form moderate form potent and super potent so the infant skin and flexors and pes should be treated with mild to moderate uh if you need to treat the potent steroid don't give daily dose so twice weekly or rotational basis and there are difference with lotion gels creams and ointment and pes better to read it read about so next case the chronic arthritis patient came with itchy rash over the left knee joint so unilateral so arthritis patient usually take medicines if not respond they apply lot of various things so allergic and like dermatitis due to the herbal treatment for plants here lot of allergic and like dermatitis came with this application of vix sita lepa and egg oil the plaster allergy called vone allergy plaster allergy and like dermatitis here fingertip variants of fingertip dermatitis due to a lot of uh, the flowers milk and uh, onions garlic and some rubber pens induce fingertip variants allergic and like dermatitis here another case came with the perioral dermatitis the problem is we can heal with the steroid but it can recur until we remove this habit of the child so lip licking dermatitis we have to remove this habit otherwise it will recur another case of uh, rubber slipper 
contact allergy contact dermatitis you can see the the rubber band the mainly they start from the first toe cleft and in the cases of the, the phytophotodermatitis the plant the, the polymorphic nature linear and uh, the different different size of uh, cases here the one army person came with training period with this rash similar lesions in the upper limb also diagnosis even though in the exposed area when they when they the crawling in the ground the t-shirt go up and contact with the plants and with the light they develop the linear and annular rash the polymorphic rash causing phytophotodermatitis without here contact dermatitis i can show lot of pictures the earphone cell phone uh, creams hair dye uh, various contact dermatitis nickel contact dermatitis and lot of things so we first thing is we have to find the cause and remove it otherwise it will recurs i saw this uh, picture because of again what is the problem here the yellow is crust the usually nasal carriers uh, the staph infection develop impetigo in the no around the nose so here treated with betamethasone and neomycin combination and clobetasol and uh, there are two problems this is staph infection no role in steroid in this condition second problem in the ch children or adult in the face there is no point to give a the potent steroid the clobetasol or betamethasone in the face so there are two malpractice here so better to avoid it even patient may misuse of the topical steroid vigorously they can induce skin atrophy and telangiectasia sometimes they have very thin skin and cutaneous ulceration also very difficult to cure okay we move into the next group the treat and follow up and refer to the dermatology if needed here i put all the disease the atopic dermatitis acne psoriasis and alopecia vitale is a very common disease when you see the literature the common diseases in all the countries these are the common diseases but if it is mild form you can manage and you can follow up. no need specialist so here painful itchy rash what is the cardinal signs again ill defined plug with erythema oozing and golden crust and hair follicle involvement here that means that very deep involvement and surrounding skin is very dry ichthyosis so diagnosis eczema what is the cause may there is atopic features for, for atopic dermatitis or other contact features cause and complication localized secondary infection or surrounding cellulitis or systemic it can precipitate lot of other renal issues and other things so earlier the earlier also nowadays also some used the condis i never used this condis because of the condis burn because uh, the condis uh, came in the crystal we have to prepare the solutions what is the correct color is a purple or pink this is a correct preparation for the condis one or two days application frequently to the top of the oozing it will is a astringent properties it will dry the skin then you can apply the creams but our the problem is condis burn uh, we are better to avoid this so in atopic dermatitis in children you can see how to diagnose atopic dermatitis very intensely itchy have you noticed the baby even in the daytime very itchy when they were uh have you noticed the the lesions uh more lichenified more lichenified in the scratching and rubbing area so symmetrical bilateral cheek involvement very dry skin erythematous ill defined patches it itchy rash more lesions in the scratching area so it's it's a atopic dermatitis so how to manage atopic dermatitis in lrh when our training period i learn from professor jamini senavaratna uh, sir uh, about this bath therapy 
20 minute bath you can see how they irritable before bath and how they comfortable after bath how they playing start to play after the bath uh, so we the the major component of bath ravi is the water water relieve the itching and everything remove the this thing. so we publish this study in the journal you if you are interested you go through it it's a very useful um, home based treatment for atopic dermatitis in children here this baby when i working in mulatti uh, the baby referred by pediatrician is very ichthyosis congenital ichthyosis ectrovian eclavian and severe ichthyosis but there is no signs of infection there is otherwise baby well no fever good sucking good uh, urine output but they put uh, the iv cannula and the baby in the pbu uh, so what's the next step i remove the cannula and send the baby to the comb with the bath therapy explain how to mother so few months later the baby came like this so this bath therapy is effective but some patients here uh came with to the wards with lot of application of varial comb remedies and lot of leaves to the skin the bath therapy sometime before bath therapy we need to put this treatment the water treatment wash it all the allergens and irritants and organism from the skin by this water treatment okay move into the next case how to describe this lesion the well defined plaque with silvery scaling is known as psoriasis so in psoriasis there are a lot of nail changes you can nail pitting and distal onycholysis and oil drop signs sometimes the joint involvement also you have to explore the psoriasis total skin clearance possible or not yes it's possible because the primarily epidermal disease psoriasis is a primarily epidermal so we need to uh, treat with this topical treatment and second line treatment with immune modulator usually used methotrexate that total skin clearance not we can't achieve with this treatment only we have to put the lifestyle modification such as stop alcohol stop smoking and give a good sleep otherwise it will recur and it will more and more worsening even with this treatment acne is not a disease it's a physiological condition but some ladies apply lot of creams and lot of things that are causing the disease so acne there are three stages of treatment needed first we have to clear the pimples and we have to prevent the acne then we remove the scar and pigmentation better to treat with topical retinoids night time application and morning time apply the antibiotic cream such as clindamycin or uh, erythromycin gel or you can use the benzoyl peroxide the remember don't use anti bacterial cream alone for the acne patient it will develop resistant the p acne and c acne so better to give a topical treatment uh combination of antibiotics with benzoyl peroxide or topical retinoids you can see uh, the topical treatment with systemic antibiotics you can use doxycycline or erythromycin or azithromycin so case 15 the asymptomatic lesions for 3 months here what is the difference there is a psoriasis vesicular or leprosy what is the difference from that this is a not a hypopigmented lesion these are deep pigmented lesions so white is lesion and here the segmental distribution the segmental vitiligo uh, if it is early treatment to the vitiligo we can give a complete cure you can see with the topical tacrolimus and topical steroid and uh, mild uh, short course of oral steroid where then you can see the treatment don't wait until this sort of extensive involvement if you when you treat with topical steroid or topical uh, tacrolimus 
if not responds to your treatment better to refer to dermatology don't wait until this then be difficult to take the repigmentation it will take long time to take to healing this disease another common condition is hair loss the hair loss is a common condition diffuse hair loss i didn't put the here because that also under physiological uh, i put the common skin disease in this case the patchy hair loss you can see that there is no scarring within the patch when you examine through the hand lens the in the edges of the hair uh, the pathognomonic sign this uh, exclamation here uh, this uh, known as alopecia areata this is a hair for expert sometimes alopecia areata is multiple here what happened when we apply the topical steroid to the alopecia areata it's a clobetasol or betamazone lotion to the topical steroid you can or intralesional steroid we have to apply the topical steroid around the normal skin also if you apply only in the center the free hair regrowth is center the active hr growing away so that's a mistake we have to apply the lotions in the patch also one Two centimeter away from the patch. Also, we have to apply the steroid lotions. Sometimes it's alopecia universalis, the total hair loss, and here you can see the eyebrow loss. This child came with severe hair loss, but again you can see the hair follicle is preserved, so we can regrow the hair with a topical and systemic treatment. topical steroid lotions and systemic oral dexamethasone mini pulse treatment this is another differential diagnosis for patchy alopecia but here the differentiate from the alopecia areata the scaly the epidermal changes the scaliness so this is a tinea capitis gray patch tinea capitis uh, not a inflammatory type here on this a gray patch tinea and with anti fungal treatment it will settle and hair regrowth can occur in sri lanka 10 year old boy what do you think 10 year old is a what is a special in sri lanka 10 year old is a scholarship so this is a pre scholarship post scholarship syndrome in the close look up there are lot of broken hairs and broken hairs in within the lesion this is a trichotillomania the the self broken the broken the hair base this and it's so what are the red signs i didn't go to the details about this red sign because this these are the red uh, disease you have to refer to the dermatology so i just for awareness i give some if anyone came with hypopigmented anesthetic face if they are sensory impairment until proven otherwise leprosy here you can see there are two girls with the uh, erythematous plaque in the or uh, here the hair follicles are preserved the hairs are preserved within the lesion but here the hairs are lost so if there is any plaque within the hair loss because of autonomic dysfunction in the leprosy this is leprosy this is tinea so th this one should be referred to the dermatology for the leprosy and thickened peripheral nerves the posterior cervical the greater auricular nerve and transcervical nerves and anyone came with a non diabetic or even diabetic non healing anesthetic wound especially in the hands don't wait until this much even though we recently get this patient this much of generalized involvement but uh, this mutilating leprosy are nowadays less but still we have some cases to see so any ulcers chronic asymptomatic non healing ulcers in especially in the exposed area any ulcers without pain or without itching you should suspect in leishmaniasis because now this all over the country is there yeah. so when we do the slip skin simia and the aspirate fluid and see the h and e stain there are dot and dash appearance of parasite in the, this fluid we can confirm the leishmaniasis if not simia negative then we go for the biopsy and diagnose so we are in lrp see lot of cases and he is still in bony i see lot of cases of leishmaniasis in the faces so this for your awareness i put here 
So here, the in our clinic setup, if they, there's early uh, presentation of leishmaniasis, we without sodium stripoglucanate, we can heal with a heat therapy. Here, this baby, we uh, cure with a heat therapy. This is a comb based treatment again, kit application uh, heal this uh, baby without uh, the toxic drug using that uh, sodium superchloride. Don't wait until this much of ulceration occurs. Better to refer uh, if there's no pain, no itchy ulcers. Uh, better to suspect leishmaniasis and send to the dermatology. Don't wait until this so much of ulcer. Then the when we heal this the disease, it will definitely heal. And this is another common condition, the itchy rash, wheels and angioedema, urticaria and angioedema. The problem is if it is acute, it usually manage in uh, five to, uh, usually is managed in, uh, in OPD or ETU and set up in ward set up by all the doctors, acute. But if there is chronic, more than six weeks duration, better to refer to dermatology to find the underlying cause. The most of the time it's uh, idiopathic. Uh, this uh, I put some cases of Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic abdominal necrosis. You can see the total skin failure. This is like an organ failure, total skin failure. So uh, if there is any patient develop after uh, mucous membrane involvement with stress, uh, suspect drug reaction, better to early refer to the dermatologist. The last for the awareness. Usually, the progressive deletion soon after the words, if there's a tiny dots in words, uh, earlier the practice, it will, uh, the advice to the mother, it will resolve with the time. So, no need to worry, take the baby to the home. But nowadays, you can see these babies, these two babies, the lesions so earlier start with the very pinpoint papules. Now, uh, this uh, three to four months, they develop this like a ball. So, we don't know how much they enlarge, how much they resolve. Definitely, this resolve after one year of age, but when they resolve, came with disfiguration. So, this known as infantile hemangioma, we can manage in the dermatology clinic with the oral propranol. You can see the response with the oral propranol and topical timolol. So, if there's early diagnosis with uh, this hemangioma, we can, even though this child very difficult to open eyes, they're difficult to open eyes, then they, they, there's eye problems can occur in later. So, when they treated with oral propanol, the, uh, even after two, three, two months, they may be dissolve all the lesions and uh, open the eyes also. So, if they delayed, you late diagnosis and late treatment cause, lot of disfiguration in the face and heal with lot of scarring and lot of other social issues in later. Okay, you have, you, I finished my cases. Um, so we will see the answers for this MCQs. Stabilococcal skeletal syndrome can occur in, usually in the children, but if there is adult with renal failure, they are difficult to eliminate the toxins to the renal, then they can develop. Scabies, Yes, acute clonal nephritis, any skin infection, secondary strep, in, strep infection. When they broken the skin barrier, they colonize with the strep infection, can cause AGN. I show the case in the shoulder also. Herpes zoster can lead permanent blindness. Yes, I show the case. And Kokosagi virus, yes, enterovirus, it can cause skin sink deficiency and diarrhea. Neonatal cutaneous curvy simplex, especially in the SCM type, can progress to the CNS or disseminated disease. So, you have to aggressive treatment with IV acyclovir. Kirion is an abscess, yes, but due to uh, fungal infection, tinea infection. There are secondary staph infection, but so not caused by chemical. Pitriasis vesicular, usually asymptomatic, yes. Iron deficiency anemia predisposed, yes, angular chelitis is a multiple pathogenesis due to iron deficiency and superadded candida infection. If it is six weeks, more than six weeks, chronic urticaria referred to dermatology. Atopic dermatitis, 
yes the, the, the extensive involvement of atopic dermatitis is the lot of oozing and lot of scale the protein lost through the skin causing hypoalbuminemia so don't church the nephrotic syndrome nephritis syndrome atopic dermatitis the hypoalbuminemia can the protein lost through the skin allergic and dermatitis is a type of hypersensitivity reaction and can the redeem yes in the blister beetle is irrit- very irritant and psoriasis is a cotton phenomena yes it can induced by trauma alopecia areata is a non scarring and recurrent the commonest association with like hypothyroidism yes gram negative polycystic may result from long term treatment of acne with tetracycline topical antibodies so that gram negative polycystic better to stop tetracycline to treat with augmentin or cotrim the incubation period of leprosy is long yes months to years the cutaneous leishmaniasis is usually painless but more typically painless so false oral propanol is a promising probiotic option i show the case hemangioma so i acknowledge this lecture to my i would like to express the thank to our teachers especially in dermatology training so professor jamini sarvarna sri ani samravira dr vivlavarna surya in overseas training doc in germany the prof peter elsner and professor ari rani thank you a sincere thanks to dr sivaneshan pribakaran consultant dermatologist of district general hospital vaunia for this excellent lecture and taking his uh, busy time off to do this lecture for us thank you sir